is a great fourth place for him. Fabio Di Gian Antonio has taken fifth back from Augusto Fernandez right at the death. But Delon underway in the British Grand Prix in Moto2, and it's a good start from pole position from Marco Mazzecchi. A bit of a wheelie from Sam Lowe's, but it's not a big run down to the line, and he gets the inside line. Jorge Navarro, look at him, and look out for Remy Gardner also coming through there, heading down towards Maggots for the first time. And Lowe's has picked up a position, he's picked up second place from Navarro. So it's Mazzecchi leading from Sam Lowe's in second place. Sam's, Sam's gone round the outside of Mazzecchi, and Lowe's takes oh. charge of the British. British Grand Prix in the opening few corners and he did it with a stunning move into the Haggis straight. Lowe's leads now from Bezeki. Navarro is second and Gardner attacking him for third. Neil told us Sam said he wasn't going to leave anything out there in the British GP. Lap one, he means business. It's a stow though. Bezeki fights straight back. Will he run it a little bit wide? He's going to. And Lowe's is going to get the line again through Stow down the little dip they drop towards the Vale chicane. Again, Bezeki thinks about the inside, but Lowe's this time has him covered. It didn't work out for him in warm-up through there, but this time he's safely through. The championship leader, Remy Gardner, has a couple of moments through the chicane. His rear end is squirming around club corner, and he's lost fourth place now to his teammate Raul Fernandez ahead of Fabio Di Gian Antonio. So, into Abbey, and it is Sam Lowe's leading from Bezeki under pressure from Jorge Navarro now. Watching Digi there, he done well not to collect Remy Gardner into the club chicane, but Digi now attacking Remy again. So Digi's feeling good here on lap one, but the, the two Akiyo KTMs, they're stuck here together, but they're in touch with the lead three. Yeah, it hasn't gone all the wrong way. We talked about how much they dominated on that run of races uh, between Le Mans and over to Assen. One and two's all the way through for them. But on this occasion, they're battling for fourth place. Gardner right in the slipstream of his teammate, Raul Fernandez. Is he going to attack on the inside? No, not this time. He takes a tight line, but it's really more than anything holding up Fabio Di Gian Antonio. So around they come, Luffield corner in front of the huge grandstands here at the British Grand Prix and just listen to the crowd roar as Sam Lowe crosses the line in first place at the end of the first lap. Still 17 to go but Lowe's exactly where he would want to be. That's how he planned to start it, he's done well to keep Bezeki at bay. Bear in mind that Bezeki's got that soft rear tyre so it will provide that extra grip in these early laps. And Remy Gardner's come through at Cops Corner on Raul Fernandez. So Gardner, who also has shown pace this weekend, he's up into fourth place in behind Jorge Navarro as it starts to, I was going to say, settle down a little bit as Fabio Di Gian Antonio looked on the inside of Raul Fernandez. Around into Chapel Corner and onto the Hangar Straight. Yeah, sometimes we see it difficult for the guys to to get the tyres up to temperature straight away and a cool track here today, it looks like the top seven, top eight, they're all in touch Aaron Cannett's back there in eighth but he's got the speed Here comes Gardner into Stoke Corner and Dijan Antonio on to Fernandez, so Gardner to third, Digi to fifth place, he runs it off track though Dijan Antonio, he's taken on to the outside of the track in the green a couple more of them and he'll be getting a warning from race direction, they may even give him one for that because in the process of making the move he run it outside track limit so he may be told to drop a position but uh, he has got through on the track in front of Raul Fernandez and into fifth. Yeah perhaps he will get that uh, lose one position signal on his dashboard but um, yeah if not it will be one mark towards that five feet he'll, they're allowed before they get the long lap penalty. In the early stage of the race you just saw the rear stepping out there on Remy Gardner through far corner we've seen so many people go down there this weekend but the rear sliding and leaving a big black line on the track from the Australian even on these early laps in this 18 lap Moto2 race. Yeah Remy's not scared of rear wheel steering it so he does like to put the throttle down really steer that back to the rear as Bezeki sets up the move on Sam. Bezeki into Brooklyn he was was lining that one all the way up from the loop. Uh, Sam tried to do the cutback on him, but Bezeki did well, got his bike stuck right in the middle of the track and no way back from Sam Lowe's. But this is what Bezeki needs to do at this stage of the race. Sam needs to get him working that rear tyre as much as he can so that he has the edge in the latter stages. He'd love to be in front of him, but if he's in behind him, Lowe's just has to try and stick with the Italian. Yeah, that move was set up running through the entry there. It's a third gear corner and you've, whenever you've got that extra grip, you can build that momentum onto the straight. A little bit of draft and then he pulled out, nice clean move down into Brooklyn. So Bezeki trying to make hay while the sun shines here, make use of that soft tyre while he's got the extra grip over his rivals.
Remy Gardner is the fastest rider on circuit at the moment, a 204.7 from him. I don't think Lowe's will hit the panic button just yet with the two fast riders around him. Lowe's built into a race and has shown over recent weeks, in fact, throughout the whole season, late on, he has a decent pace. Pasecki has been known to fade, even though that used to be one of his strong suits. Jorge Navarro there in fourth spot. Whereas Pasecki's gone with a soft rear tyre, Navarro's gone with a soft front tyre. He seems to be able to make that work on board that speed up, but maybe that will tell its own tale in the latter stages of this one. Yeah, it seems to be that's been a breakthrough for him. He really struggled with the confidence in the front end of that machine all season. He really couldn't find a setting that worked for him. Dunlop brought that new option rear tyre, the softest front Moto2 tyre they've used this year. And all of a sudden, Navarro's been on the pace right from free practice one. It's so the front seven breaking away slightly, the usual suspects, I would say, in Moto2. Perhaps Navarro and, of course, Digi's a race winner this year and will move up to MotoGP next year. But uh, some familiar names, the other five are the ones that we would expect to be around there, including the winner last time we came here to Silverstone for the British Grand Prix back in 2019, Augusto Fernandez, Sablo's teammate, rounding out that front seven. Yeah, it's a fast group, actually. It's a brand new best race lap for Moto2 from Remy Gardner. A 204.7. We did see a 2.39 in qualifying, so there's a little bit left out there, but at low two minute four in race conditions would be superbly fast. But Zeki's gone deep there. Really, really deep. Cuts back across. Just, uh, it's not really a swooping line though, that one. That was one where he'd just gone a little bit further than he'd like on his braking marker. On board with Remy Gardner. Fifth gear as they come through Woodcut Corner and powering it down the home straight. He's strong through here, Gardner lets the rear step out on him, but when he finds grip, he can fire it down that home straight. Third lap completed, Gardner in third. He'll be happy with this one because in terms of his title rivals, Pazeki's out there in front, but uh, in, in, in the championship itself, he's 47 points down on the Aussie. Sam fast through Brooklyn's, or through uh, Maggots into Beckett's there, but listening to that 765 sing through Woodcote there, you could hear Remy never rolled out of the throttle, 100% commitment, a bit of rear spin through there, helps him steer the bike, and that medium rear tyre, it will take that abuse, so that's where Bezeki has to be a little bit more gentle, so you can see Sam and Remy being a little bit more aggressive, a bit more wheel spin. It's going to be intriguing to see how it pans out. Lorenzo Baldessari's come back in, problem for the MV Augusta, uh, he's also still nursing a few injuries, Balda, but it's not quite working this year for Ian Balda. Once a MotoGP prospect, now his career is uh, looking on the wane a little bit. Not what we like to see at all, because there's bagfuls of talent in Balda. So this has turned into pretty much a seven-bait group. I thought Aaron Cannon could hang with them today. He did set the fastest lap throughout free practice with a 2.041, but on the race conditions here, it's not quite working for him. He's dropped away from that group, and he's battling with Chami VRK. Different approaches through farm and up towards village, and you can see it's going to cost Sam Lowe's on this occasion, run it a little bit deep, and he compromises entry into the village corner and into the loop. Remy Gardner is able to take over from Sam Lowe's in second place. So Lowe's he's doing everything to try and hope that that isn't the case because he's just set a new best lap of the race. Then it was beaten by Jorge Navarro, but he was a tenth quicker than Gardner on that penultimate lap. It's the last go around through Maggots and Beckett's, then up to towards Chapel, around the right hand and then into the left of Chapel and onto the hangar straight for the final time. Bezeki's looks strong down to straw on every lap. Has he got something in stow on this occasion? I don't think he's close enough. He was just a little bit too far back through sector one. Usually he'd be already on the back wheel, so this overtaking into here isn't possible. Maybe into the Ville Chicane. We did see him try it earlier with a good acceleration out of Stowe, but I don't know if he's close enough. I don't think he's close enough on this occasion, Michael, as Gardner has it covered. Where can he conjure up a move? We know this is a sector now where Gardner will let it all hang out, hang loose. The surf kid from New South Wales, Remy Gardner, through club corner now. Down the international pit straight, he's so strong through here, he's not going to give Bezeki a chance, surely, on this last lap. You can see a wiggle from Bezeki, he was trying to wind on the throttle a little bit too early, a bit of a spin up and pump and move as Remy rear wheel steers it round farm for one last time. So does Bezeki, pushing so hard, doing everything he can, but Gunn appears to have it covered. We come into the final sector of this race now, through the loop into the little entry corner, up a gear he goes, then up through the box, 
all the way into sixth gear, down the Wellington Strait, into Brooklands for the final time. Can Remy Garner win his fourth race of the season, his fifth race ever in Moto2? Can he emulate his father, Wayne, and go on and take victory in this race? Will he go on and become world champion? The way he has performed today suggests that he is on his way to take his maiden victory in this championship. He comes around Woodcut for the final time. Remy Gardner wins the British Grand Prix from Marco Vizecchi in second place. Jorge Navarro takes third. Sam Lowe's a great fourth place for him. Fabio Gian Antonio has taken fifth back from Augusto Fernandez right at the death. But delight at one side of the IO garage. Despair in the other for Raul Fernandez. Remy Gardner has won the British Grand Prix. And in doing so, he's extended his championship lead to 44 points.